Welcome everybody and Cardinal fans to the second uh, edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook and uh, we've got Coach uh, Cruzy here with us today after our first football game and Coach we've got to talk a little bit about that first football game. Mm -hmm. I, I know probably the end result is not what you were looking for uh, but I coached a long time and I realized it takes a while for the, uh, the lights to come on <laughs> and uh, after you did I really thought it you know probably after the drive after the uh, well at the end of the first half I thought we dominated the football game. You know, that, that's the frustrating part of it is we yeah. felt like we could do some things against them, and, and we did in the, in the second half and late in the first, first half, but it took us 27-odd minutes to, to get rolling, and, and that's the frustrating thing. And, and you, can, you can point to whatever you want to point to, whether it's you know, young guys playing, whether it's all these things, whether it's you know, nerves. Well, they had the nerves too, and they, had the, they could point to the same things, and they started a whole lot faster than we did. And, you know, we've. I've got to get that fixed. That that's on me because uh, it wasn't just uh, offense or defense. It was we were that way um, as a team, and uh, so that's that's something that I take takes ownership in, and, and uh, I'm working every minute to get that straightened out. And and once we got rolling, uh, you know, with about three minutes to go in the half, we did some really really good things. It was a different team. Um, you know the the turnovers the three turnovers hurt us and uh, the lack of takeaways on defense you can't be minus three in the turnover takeaway ratio and, and win very many games in college football I think the the overtime average is about you're going to lose about 92 percent of those and and uh, so that was a big statistic for us that uh, we didn't we didn't handle very well or do a very good job with we turned it over too much on offense and we didn't take it away on defense and those two things are huge you know and we got the ball out a few times. The ball was rolling around the ground a few times defensively, and and uh, we didn't recover it for whatever reason. Or if it bounced to the other team or rolled out of bounds or or uh, what have you, but th those things are those things are part of the game, and and we've got to you know do more to overcome that. Well, you and I both know whether you're playing Tiddly Winks or anything else, you can't beat the Sisters of the Poor if you turn it over. <laughs> no you know doubt. whether it's football, basketball, baseball, yep. any athlete yeah, exactly. you can talk about. But a lot of that, I feel like, and I talk to a lot of the people after the ball game. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to know them through the years yeah. doing this show with you and stuff. And, you know, they bleed uh, uh, jewel red. There's no question yeah. about it. But I really do feel that, that learning how to win is a process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you guys are right yep. now. Uh, I mean, you dominated from that point that we alluded to earlier to the end of the ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right with the muff punt instead of going our way. But... You know, when you get in your mind that you have the ability to be successful and win, sometimes those, you know, the whole thing and the whole atmosphere changes. Yeah, you know, if we had the key to that, we'd both be billionaires. Yeah, you know, the old, you know, positive thinking, from, you know, hey, you know, phenomenon of, hey, think positive thoughts and positive things are going to happen, you know, plan to win and know you're going to win. And, and a lot of times, like you said, and you and I have talked about a lot over the years, is, is uh, for whatever reason, you, and you watch winning teams, right. you know, predominantly winning teams in college football or in the NFL or even in high school, and the ball bounces their way more often. Why that is, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I believe in, in positive thought and all of those things, too, and we've, we've got to get over that hump as a team. And, and uh, you know, that's something we've been struggling with over the last couple of years, and, and uh, we're to a point now with our roster where we need to uh, get over that hump uh, very, very soon. Yeah, th there's no question about it. And, and, you know, I think a, the biggest thing is confidence. As an example, when a cook returned the punt, fantastic. Should have mm -hmm. been on ESPN. It was a, <laughs> it was, really, it, it was, was a, it was it was a, a special a football play. It yeah. really was. I'm not over exaggerating. Yeah, and there were some nice blocks in there. Oh, the those, guy, those guys yeah. came back. Everybody Feeling. hustled, yep. peeled back, and made yep. plays. But the entire the entire sideline, that's the most excited I've seen in a long time. Yeah. And, but what you didn't see was the fan base. They were going crazy. Yeah. They've got to believe. Everybody's got to believe. Yeah. Now, I know we need something to believe in, and right. I know that's what's so frustrating yep. for you, but, but I think we can all see that there's potential there. Somebody on that squad, and it, it has to be a player. It really does. Yeah. It's not, it can't be a coach or mm -hmm. a fan or the president of the university. Somebody on that squad has got to go get it. Yeah, you're 100% correct. It's got to be, instead of, you know, guys looking at each other to figure out who's going to make the play. Yeah, who's go who everybody, else is going to do it? 
so everybody needs to take it upon themselves to say, hey, that person's going to be me. Right, exactly. And when, when everybody has the focus, I'm going to make the play that changes the game, or I'm going to make a big play here, then all of a sudden you've got a bunch of mindsets that are right. extremely positive with the right, right focus instead of looking to somebody else. They're, they're looking to themselves and figuring out, how do I make a big play in this situation? Yeah, that's exactly true, and I think, uh, you know, success breeds success, and quite frankly, failure breeds failure, mm -hmm. and when you're trying to go the uphill battle, yep. you know, and also once you get on top and supposed to win them all, that pressure is really is great as well. Yeah, you know? it's, uh, you know, and I'd like our players to get to the point to feel that here, because yeah. I've been to that point, point in other times in my career, and and uh, care for what you wish for when you get there, because the pressure at, at sometimes is even greater uh, once you're there, which... You know, that's what we're all striving for. Yeah, and there's no greater feeling than when you get to the top. Absolutely. Now. Well, we'll come back for the uh, second edition of uh, Inside the uh, Cardinal Playbook in just a second. My name is Jesse Leimkuller, CEO of Belvoir Winery, 110 years in the making. We provide a, a unique experience uh, in that it's a historic building. It's 110 years old. And we allow uh, people to bring in their own caterers to um, have a nice formal sit-down meal or something that's social and very casual let them do basically whatever they want as far as their, their event goes. We have the fountain running and have the gazebo up for all the wedding days and special days out here. I'm Jesse Limekiller, the CEO of Belvoir Winery. At Poor Boy Oil Company, we want to meet people interested in joining our family. Employment benefits include paid vacations, health care, life insurance, and 401k plans. If you are growth oriented, flexible, focused on high quality, analytical and have common sense, you have what it takes. If you are interested in exploring a career opportunity with Poor Boy Oil Company, please take a moment to apply online at poorboyoil.com. Foreclosure. Repossession. Garnishment. Costello and Farah can fight for you. Are creditors threatening to take your property or your money? My office has helped thousands of people in the Kansas City area protect their assets through debt reorganization or bankruptcy protection. Call my office at 816-505-HELP and see if we can help you protect your assets and get you back on your feet. The attorneys of Costello and Farah, lawyers who will fight for you. Call 816-505-HELP today. Welcome back to our second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Well, Coach, let's talk a little bit about the offense uh, Saturday. Uh, saw some good things, like I said, midway through the first or second quarter on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was there was really even, as you go back and watch the film, in our first couple drives, there were some really good things there, too. We we just didn't convert the third downs we needed to. And, and uh, you know, we had some guys that were, were geared up and, and uh, you know the adrenaline was high, and, and Sean will tell you he was the first series flow to the few. You know the, the, they were sailing on him just a little bit because of the the adrenaline. And uh, you know our Thomas Cook, you know I think had a, it felt like he had a lot on his shoulders and, well, and didn't know, those, execute maybe as well as he did in the kids, second half. Those and, kids are like Sean and Cook. Everybody has expectations yep, for him. Absolutely, and they feel coming in like okay, we just talked about it. we need somebody to turn it around. Yep. Those two guys feel like they're yep. that somebody. Yeah, and, and they, they both have been at times in their career here. And, and uh, what was nice to see was both of them, you know, kind of start to come into their own later in the second half or later in the first half and then, you know, see some really good things from uh, as we went forward. You know, the offensive line, I thought, you know, we've, we've got a solid group up front there and, and uh, we had we lost – our left tackle due to some some heat related things. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Right? He's going to be okay. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Spent the night in the hospital and and uh, just getting the fluids right again. And, and uh, you know, you realize some of those offensive linemen they got a lot of gear on. They got a lot of different. You know, oh, it's, it's he's got night. some different braces on different parts of his body. It doesn't allow his skin to breathe and you know cool down and some of those things. And you know, you're always striving to be better. Um, but uh, they came kind of came into their own in the second half as well. How about Chris Smith? Bad. You know, we, me, Chris, you, me and you have talked about it. And of course, I had that yeah. long weekend with Sean, or yeah. that long night yep. with Sean, where we visited and talked mm -hmm. about receivers. And what, there's probably six or seven of them, really, that yeah. are capable. Right. They, and I, I totally see what you and Sean and the yep. offensive staff both are talking about. But I thought Chris Smith kind of stepped up a little bit. You know what? It was, it was great to see from him. And he's had spurts like that in his time here where, you know, he's given us a spark on a big third down. And, you know, Sean and him, 
kind of got on the same page on Saturday in the second half, and he made some nice plays, you know, catch and run plays, and really and, running uh, made the slant some, well. Made some guys miss in the middle of the field, and and uh, that's got to be a big component of what we do. Uh, you talked about you know having you know six or seven different guys there that we feel confident in. Sean has a higher comfort level in our receiving core than he ever has, mm -hmm. you know, and at any night, you know, any one of those guys could be the the primary guy. And, uh, you know, he moved the ball around. Sean did a nice job of moving the ball around, just dribbling the ball again, you know, Saturday or Thursday he night. He does that very well. Yeah, you know, he's, that tells me he's throwing to the open guy. He's not just finding a receiver that he yeah, wants to throw it to and throwing it there. And, and uh, so, so that part of it was good. There's some, there some positive things there. Um, you know, tight end position, you know, we had Nick Cody in there. We had, and, you know, this wasn't out publicly, but Andrew, Andrew Buffa was dealing with a, an illness and a, that he hadn't been quite cleared yet till about middle of that last week. And uh, so we'll finally get him back, which will be great to have number yeah. nine in his big frame back in there. Great and, run blocker. And yeah. he, he runs his real quick routes yeah. pretty well, short <laughs> and, routes in yeah. the flat. And Nick Cody, you know, stepped in, who we transitioned from defense. He was a outside linebacker. linebacker for us last year and has moved over to tight end and doing a nice job. And, and then Hayden Murray and Caden Compton and getting those guys in and getting them rolling too. Hayden Murray was a linebacker a year ago. We moved over to the offensive side. And, and uh, so we like what we're getting there. And, you know, a couple of those guys hadn't played that position at the college game uh, the other night. So it was good to get them in and get them some experience there. And then, you know, Glenn Whitney is, you know, can, going to continue to be a big part of what we do. You know, we would have liked to maybe got him some more things on Saturday than what we did. And, you know, you'll see him as a big part of, of what we do going forward. Uh, so, you know, would we have liked to start faster? Definitely. Absolutely. That's no secret. You know, everybody who was there who has seen the game uh, knows that. And the, the positive thing is when you go back and watch it, there's some, there's some tremendous stuff and some tremendous opportunities with some with probably more playmakers than we've ever had on the field before and as comfortable as we've felt on the offensive line since we've been here. Well, you know, I thought when you uh, spread it, you know, you were, uh, when you really started moving the ball, you spread it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, now you do both. Yeah, we and do. And you've always done yep, both. Yep. So I'm not saying that we're, yeah. you know, doing anything different because we, you know, but I felt like Sean just had a little bit more confidence and uh, Cookie had a little bit more space in the seams and Smitty really did yeah. as far as receiving when we spread it out a yep. little bit instead of having it in tight, you know. Yep. More well, we, you know, we, had, we got more athletes in space and uh, that, that was, you know, and we were down several touchdowns at that point and we're trying to battle back and, and you know, those, you, when you're behind the eight ball a little bit, you you got to get in some more wide open type sets and, and try and find some seams and you some bet. of those things where, you you know, if you're on the other side of it, you know, more like they did, you get in some heavier personnel groups, 21 or 12 personnel and run the ball a little bit more and, and uh, control the clock and some of those things. So, you know, John, Sean operates that, that, those spread formations well, you know, and you probably, he certainly does. you noticed it on Saturday, we, yeah. we give him a lot of latitude on the field and he's, he's calling some of it on the field, you know, we'll give him, we'll say you, you, you. And he's going to call it, and, and we'll just, you know, maybe push the pace a little bit at time. And it's nice times. to have a three-year starter can do. Yeah, it's it's a very comfortable situation, and and you know he's he'll he'll be the first one to tell you he'd love to have a couple of those throws back, and and uh, he's he'll he'll be better this week too there, and and uh, we're we're excited that he's standing back there for us, and and he's a guy we got a lot of confidence in. Well, we'll come back uh, on the next seven and talk a little bit about the defense, especially teams on inside the Cardinal playbook. Tanner's is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Their happy hour specials every day are served from two different areas, and the patio section is now enclosed for meetings or other gatherings. Join us home football Saturdays for the Cardinal Live postgame show with head football coach Jared Cruzy, and come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Tanner's of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Hi there, this is Kurt McCoy. 
local owner, shop local, 365KC. Shop local, 365KC, the home of MFS Design Services. We design websites and we do search engine optimization. We can help you shoot a local video for your event or for your business. And we can also help you with social media consultations. Contact us today at www.shoplocal365kc. Welcome back to the next segment of Inside the Card Number Playbook. Coach, we're going to talk a little bit about defense and specialty teams, but I got to tell you, this best in that kid is a bad mamma jamma. <laughs> he played well. I mean, he was all over the place making tackles. Uh, now, was he first team all conference last year? He was second team all. And I can't team. believe he was second team. Yeah. But this year, honestly, he is, a, he is a very good football player. He led the conference in interceptions last year, and he is, you know, he's a, another guy that's as crazy as we, you and I are, and he's going to go and be a coach after he gets done Poor guy. playing. I, I, I tell him all the time that he's, he's not he right. He, he didn't and, even uh, buy a pillow. No, I'm with you. Well, you know, you watched him play the other night, and it's more of the same what we've seen with him for the last couple of years is that he is a relentless competitor. And uh, the, some of the things that he did the other night, you know, some of the plays that he made that weren't his to make, uh, were phenomenal. They were big time effort and just physical. He's just, I can't say enough about him. I wish we had 11 guys that, that, are, that would play right now with his desire and his relentless effort that he plays with because, you know, that's where a lot of those plays he made the other night, they were just big time, big time effort plays. Now there were a couple other ones where we put them in some spots to, to be a guy to make a play, but you know, he made some other, you know, we had him unofficially for 18, 19 tackles and, and, well, uh, coach, I, two and I, a half I, tackles, I, tackles for a loss and sack. Made, and made, had a sack. And, be, and I tell you what, I haven't seen a kid in a long time. And, you know, last weekend I saw two high school games, your game, pro game. Yeah. You know, I, haven't, I didn't see anybody defend the slip screens and split end screens and all the hit screens and stuff like yeah. he does. <laughs> and people don't realize, and when you watch him play, Cardinal fans, mm -hmm. you'll see a guy, he was way a buck 85. Yeah, he man, comes I'm flying, a, I'm a real good Yeah, he comes flying up, splits two blocks, and makes a tackle on the receiver, you know, yeah. on the screen. That's not easy to do at any level. He's, uh, he's, a, he's, he's a good football player. He at is. the end of the day, he's just... You know, you've, you're a defensive guy, and, and uh, those, those were my roots as well. And, and to watch a guy play like that, it makes you proud yeah. that, you know, that's how, that's how this game is supposed to be played with the relentless effort that uh, number one plays it with. And, and uh, you know, can't, can't say we, we could spend this whole segment talking about him. And yeah, he's, he's like, well, let's talk a little bit about the defensive front because yeah. you were young there. And, you know, I thought as the game went on, and maybe this is one reason why you, you talk about, you know, you could go ahead and practice all you want to, but until mm -hmm. you get in a real game, right. it, it, you don't know. And I think we, and we stopped the run yeah. pretty much after mid, well, yeah. probably seven minutes into the yeah. se second quarter. Yeah. It was a whole different ball game. Yeah. And I kind of felt like that your down linemen started getting a little confidence and we were getting in the right gaps. Yeah. Your linebackers were filling. I know you had some problems with that early. Right. right. Yeah, we did. We had some. We had some issues early, and you mentioned we're young on the defensive line. Of the nine guys we played on the defensive line the other night, two of them have played, and you know Todd Hearns and Omar were right. the two that have actually played in a college game, and the rest of them are all young. I'm, I'm waiting to the time where we can match up those position groups where they're, where none of them are. We're not playing, you know, fresh guys anymore. We're just we're not to that point yet. But uh, it was, it was fun to watch them come together after about like you said seven minutes or so left in the second quarter you know we 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 took a deep breath and we started you know Start playing, football. playing football and we started reacting and, and you know fitting the right gaps and being assignment correct a whole lot more and you know we rotated a bunch of guys in there you know some of that was there may be some different guys playing in some of those sets you know that maybe we're playing earlier in the game that that for whatever reason you know, could slow their heart rate and, and uh, think a little bit more clearly and, and be a little bit more assignment correct. And, you know, I was really proud of the way we responded after that first initial surge because after about halfway through the second quarter through till honestly the very last drive of the game, their very last drive of the game, we give up a a over-the-top throw in cover two that can't ever happen. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, safety got his eyes down on the underneath coverage. Kind of like Denver in the playoffs. Yeah, and, and so that, that's 
But until that that whole stretch, you know, halfway through the second quarter, through last drive of the game, Without we played lights, some lights out football defensively, and and it was good to see those guys respond that way, and and uh, you know, making a few adjustments, you know, from a, from a play calling standpoint and some of that stuff, and uh, so there's a lot of positive there too. Again. Like this, like we talked about with offense, we can't wait that long. Right. We can't wait that long to to be right or to get right. And uh, so that's that's our focus this week is, hey, we got to start we got to start fast and play that way for four quarters, not two and a half. Um, and then, you know, as defense is a big part of special teams as well. You know, some of that bled over a little bit into special teams. Although we were we had a pretty solid day in the special teams arena. We they, gave, they had one good punt gave return, up, and he was an All-American. We gave up a tough punt return, and uh, you know, it was we didn't find the returner, and we didn't close the middle, and and some different things, and and. Uh, but that punt know, return we had with Cook was was as good as I've seen in many years. Thomas's was was you know start to finish. You know he, he's getting people away from it, and the ball actually bounces to him, and he fields it and reverses the field, and we get. You know, the, you get three guys to peel back. We get guys peeling back in effort plays by, you know, Thomas will be the first one to tell you that wasn't that wasn't near all me. There's no way I could have no, done that wasn't. with, you know, Colby Fowler has a good block, and we have some other guys running down the field to, to clear to clear the sideline. Rick Cole went crazy and, on one of the blocks. And it was uh, it was fun to see. We needed that spark at that time. You know, we we go into the end of the half and and have a great drive offensively, and it ends with a swing to Thomas, Sean to Thomas in the end zone for the touchdown right before the end of the half. And then we come out of the second half and get that large momentum spark. And uh, so those those things are explosive plays that, that you see that we can make. we just got to make them more often and more consistently. And uh, we, we, we've got the we got the playmakers to do it now. Uh, we've just got to go out and play four quarters of football. Well, we'll come back with our last segment, and we'll talk a little bit about Malpo, which we play Saturday at 1 o'clock. Sometimes happy marriages fall apart, and divorce is the only way out. At a time like this, you need an attorney who will listen to you and will work for you. I'm Stephanie Shutt, and I understand that divorce can be hard for anyone, and I know the importance of a fair settlement. The decisions that are made now will affect the future happiness and well-being of you and your family. At Costello and Farah, we will fight for you. Call or visit 505 Help and let me help you. My name is Jesse Limekuler, CEO of Belvoir Winery. We provide a, a unique experience uh, in that it's a historic building. We allow uh, people to bring in their own caterers to um, have a nice formal sit-down meal or something that's social and very casual. We have a lot of the original door frames, the doors themselves, the windows, some of the original windows with the wavy glass are still in here. The wood floor, the tile floor entry is original as well, which is actually directly into the concrete. Belvoir Winery, under 10 years in the making. What should we do? Better call our shelter agent. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you got a sec? Yeah, sure. We know what the weather is like in your area because we live in your area. Shelter insurance for your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask shelter agent Kimberly Sidden about shelter's competitive insurance rates. Back to our last segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. We're going to talk a little bit about this uh, week's opponent, uh, Valparaiso. Uh, it's an eight-hour drive. It's one o'clock start. And coach, I'm just going to, I want you to tell us a little bit about Valpo. Yeah, you know this is uh, this will be a two-year deal, a two-year uh, game with with us. We go there this year, and then they come back here. I believe it might be week three next year where they come back and return the trip. And uh, so, you know, we never played them before, and you know they're a Division One one double a or or uh fc is fcs uh opponent and um so it'll be it'll be a challenging game you know they they played a common opponent to us last weekend they played st joseph's uh who's in our conference they played them at st joseph's and lost by three i believe i think it was 35 32 and uh they present some challenges you know they they've got a pretty good quarterback who's been been the guy for them for a year or two now and 
and uh, have some pretty good players at receiver. They have, similar to us, and it's kind of interesting how this works out, they have the freshman of the year in the conference as well uh, returning a tailback, and he's a nice – He's a nice player for them back there. They're, they're big on the offensive front. Um, so we'll have to be prepared for some of the things and the different dynamics and maybe what they give us and what we saw last week. Do they spread it out? Or what, what yeah, they, they do. They, that's what we've seen from them this, this season. You know, they'll get in some, some four wide sets and, and throw it around the yard a little bit and hand it off to number 49 and the 10 personnel, you know, spread run game. And, you know, they'll, they'll – They'll get in some heavier sets as well and, and hand it off downhill to him. And, you know, when you got a back like that, just like us, you, you want to get the ball in his hand Absolutely. when you got a playmaker like that. And then, you know, defensively, you know, they've got some, some seniors, some older players on defense, really on both sides of the ball. You know, they've, they're an established program. They've been around for a while. And the coach, head coach has been there for maybe, I can't remember, six or seven years maybe. So he's been there for a term right. and he's got his guys in and, and uh, playing with older players. You know, defensively, they got a, they got a couple guys on the defensive front that that can do some things and, and rush the passer and give you some fits at times. And you know, they're really solid to linebacker position in the secondary. Yeah, defensively, you're looking at a four man, three man. You know, I, we've seen a little of, of everything well, from everybody's them. Really probably, combo. Yeah, yeah, there's more four. There's probably more four three stuff that we've seen from them in their in their first two games of this year than you know, which is a little bit different than they were at the end of last year. We're going to be prepared to to see. You know, a little bit of everything. That, that's the nice thing about what we, you know, practice against each other in, in practice for, for training camp is that we can show about every look offensively and same thing defensively. We can get in about every look defensively. Well, you so we've seen both um, on both sides, and that, that really helps you when you're preparing for, for teams like this and you're not sure quite what you're going to get. Uh, you know, and in the special teams area, they've, they've got some good players there too. 23, or excuse me, 28, who's their starting uh, left corner make some really nice plays for them in the special teams coverage units and and uh they're they're, they're pretty solid in the return games and you know at the specialists and their kickers and punters and and uh you know we're going to go on the road on an eight hour bus trip to a place we haven't been before playing up a level of competition and and uh you know we're gonna you know just just like we've talked about most of this show is you know our focus right now is is heavily 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 on getting us right and getting us right for four quarters and uh, we think if we do that, you know, that we can line up against, you know, a lot of people and, and, and play pretty productive football. So that is our, that's our goal this week in, in, you know, playing four quarters of football, starting, taking care of our business, and, uh, you know, hoping to, you know, just be able to drive just home from just south of Chicago there from Valparaiso Saturday night and get home at 3 a.m. and Sunday morning and feel pretty good about, uh, you know, hopefully a victory on the road. Yeah, that's uh, you know, a lot of people. You talk about your non-conference games in early in the uh, year. That's what they're for to yeah. prepare you to get in that conference situation where right. you can compete. You're playing a lot of teams that play some of your conference yeah. opponents. Exactly, but it helps you out. Uh, that now is when you're starting to settle in a little bit of being a vi Division Two team. You've been around a little yeah. bit now, and you now you know what to expect. That's going to help you and your coaching staff as far as preparation in it. Yeah, I think so. You know, and and it's all those those little things that you learn over time that you hope. You know, compounding interest that you you continue to add that to your to your knowledge base and, and all of those things as coaches and players, you know, should should help you going forward. You bet. You know, like I said, keep the faith. Uh, for all you Cardinal fans, are going to make the trip. It's about an eight hour. It is a, uh, a one o'clock start. Yeah, one o'clock start. Uh, so again, there's central, there's central time zone as well. So yeah, there's no time yeah. switch on this. You won't, one, you won't lose that hour one way or the other. Yeah, which we, is, we, we're used to traveling so much with you that we're used to <laughs> right, losing an hour one way or the other. I think exactly. we need to go look at the positive though. We got six home games this year, so that'll be real good. Uh, that part day. of it's that part of it's nice. Although you know, we talk about we we enjoy the travel too. You know, we yeah, get to we get to be together for right. for for forty eight hours and wasn't it there? Didn't you say that's the one time you get to sleep because you're on the road? <laughs> yeah, you get it because your kids are wonderful. But when you yeah, do I love my kids and and really the sleep thing is is you know is nice. But you're you're together and you're on the road. And if you're a coach, you don't need a pillow. Yeah, I mean that's what I used to tell. But I don't even own a pillow. You, you, know, you use those down somewhere a little bit in the summertime, off. right? And and uh, the rest of it, you're 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 rolling. Well, Coach, I, I, I know you well, and I know your staff, and I know your kids fairly well now. I've been around a long time. I know that that was one game in the season, and you want to take a, a step forward, and I know you will this week, weekend over at Valpo. And good luck to you yeah. and your staff. And uh, like I said, hope we'll see everybody over at Valpo at 1 o'clock uh, this coming Saturday.